Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the audio couple. Uh, and uh, today we have a, a very nice review for you guys. Uh, so I'm going to actually review uh, the Zingali uh, Omni Ray Zero bookshelf loudspeaker. And I would just like to thank uh, Francois from uh, Audio Exchange uh, for making this review possible. Thank you, Francois. So guys, yeah, let's uh, start. Uh, so yeah, quite a substantial uh, bookshelf loudspeaker here and immediately uh, you guys will notice that it's got uh, this worn, uh, nice worn loaded uh, tweeter uh, and it's actually a compression drive unit and it's around a six inch worn that's incorporated uh, into the, the tweeter. And then it's also got a six and a half inch mid-bass driver. Uh, this loudspeaker uh, furthermore is also a uh, bass reflex design with a port actually at the bottom of the loudspeaker. So yes you get it in a variety of colors and this one we actually have in this nice uh, white color uh, and uh, in South Africa they actually um, sell them with a custom made stand that is locally produced. Quite a neat stand uh, so that the stand complements the overall uh, design of the loudspeaker um, and that's basically it. Uh, it's quite substantial. It's it's, uh, you know bigger than uh, I would say the, the, your standard uh, bookshelf loudspeaker and uh, for me it's quite a um, elegant looking loudspeaker. So what can I tell you a bit more about the Zingali? So Zingali is actually an Italian uh, company, uh, Zingali Acoustics and they're quite uh, well known for the let's call it horn uh, design loudspeakers and in this case they've actually uh, branded their horn uh, the name of the Omni Ray quite a pleasing uh, design, a uh, nice color to it and uh, in this case it's, it's a cherry wood uh, color and uh, very authentic. I think it's, uh, um, you know, it, it looks quite neat and it uh, complements the overall uh, design. Further to that, the actual uh, base driver, I can't really exactly, they don't state the, the uh, material used. It looks like it's a, a composite material and it's fairly doped. So the loudspeaker is actually supplied as is, there's no um, the grill on the loudspeaker, um, so quite an open horn design. So on the base section there is some cloth material uh, in, uh, incorporated into the design and furthermore the same cloth is used at the bottom at the uh, port. Uh, and that's it uh, from uh, the aesthetics uh, part and actually the uh, overview of the actual design. So I think all of you guys are quite interested to hear what, uh, how did it sound and what is the performance. So uh, first of all uh, I would like to tell uh, people that look, um, any enthusiast out there, the moment you purchase these loudspeakers or uh, audition them, you instantly become a uh, audiophile. Uh, and the reason that behind it is quite clear is, look, this is quite uh, quite a loudspeaker. What I mean by that is. Um, uh, it's a very intimate loudspeaker, um, uh, you know, so even if you play music at a very low level, uh, it supplies a very full uh, and colorful, uh, let's say, sound uh, impression. Um, it's almost that you are at a very uh, intimate uh, live performance and uh, it's a such that uh, uh, the band is actually just playing for you. So this is how a good a let's call it sound stage or overall uh, sound impression these speakers give. It's very uh, colorful, uh, it's very open um, but yet still very intimate. Um, and then a lot of guys will say, Guy, uh, Nimrod, but look, we know that uh, horn type loudspeakers, uh, especially with a compression drive unit, is very uh, can become quite uh, bright. In this case, no. Um, uh, with the Omni Ray horn and the combination of the crossover and the actual overall design, um, at no stage these, uh, did this loudspeakers uh, become um, uh, bright. Look, they are very um, sensitive to room placement, so it will take you a while. It took me also quite a while to find the ideal spot in the listening room and in both areas. I deployed it on the, the big manly valve uh, amplifiers, which uh, which they actually, um, it worked well. And then I've also deployed it in the main uh, test area, and there I had to play around with positioning a bit. Um, uh, but once we've actually settled on the actual position and also on the cabling, it was very sensitive to what type of cabling you can use. So if you use bright cables that is uh, typical bright sounding, uh, the loudspeaker will reveal that. Yeah, so you can also supply, uh, you know, a slight toe, toe in. Uh, I preferred it with just a slight toe in, not an aggressive toe towards the listener. And then you achieve very good uh, response. Later on we will uh, share the scorecard with you and then you'll also note what the, um, the overall impression was from me. What more can I tell you about the sound? It has to be heard. Look guys, um, yeah, so if you play music at uh, quite an intimate venue, um, let's call it my small band, let's say just one singer, 
uh, with a cello and maybe uh, some drums um, and maybe some brass uh, instrument, maybe a saxophone or a trumpet. Uh, these speakers are at their best. Um, very intimate sounding, uh, but still open, huge sound stage. Uh, yeah, so they've really achieved uh, quite a, a sweet, let's call it my sweet sounding uh, uh, loudspeaker in the higher frequencies and then also extended mid-range. The mid-range is quite good uh, and then the, the lows is also quite solid, uh, you know, for, for a six and a half inch loudspeaker and it also goes uh, quite quite deep in the bass, it extends. But what is more important is that it's, it's just, the sound is very realistic. Uh, so whenever there's uh, instruments uh, playing, uh, they sound very realistic, uh, but still intimate. Um, at some stage I told uh, Teresa that, look, uh, I feel that there's an angel uh, sitting on my shoulder and whispering uh, the music into my ears and this is how I experienced it so it was a very pleasant experience uh, yeah so the loudspeaker will uh, make you look forward to the next nuance within the music uh, the next passage within the music and we uh, we found ourselves uh, listening uh, to a lot of music uh, but also listen to the full cut we, and um, th there's not a lot of loudspeakers that can do that and um, also there was no listening fatigue you know at some stage we really played it uh, quite loud um, but there's just no listening fatigue and it does this loudspeaker never screams at you uh, and you can actually hear a lot of detail within the recording uh, you hear a lot of text of the instruments, uh, the voices are rendered uh, nice and crisp, um, but also a huge sound stage. Um, but what I must also mention in the sound stage is that um, you know vocals and trumpets is not over exaggerated or uh, they sound bigger than than life. They they actually still um, possess that uh, lifelike quality of uh, the actual instruments, uh, and the textures are really amazing that you can hear from these loudspeakers. So maybe in uh, audio terms it will be a bit more of the inner detail, uh, the micro uh, dynamics are excellent uh, but together with the macro dynamics they, they are excellent uh, but I must mention uh, that um, these loudspeakers are rating is around 200 watt. I would say ideal is over 200 watt uh, so it needs quite a bit of amplification behind it. So in general it matches uh, transistors and uh, valve based designs equally well. I couldn't really uh, put the one uh, over the others although I've uh, uh, you know had it in on, on solid state for quite some while uh, so let's say about 60 percent of the auditioning was basically on solid state power amplification but then with valve pre-amplification and again the uh, shit fryer on on preamp duties and I've also used uh, leases uh, as, as, a, as a source but what really uh, caught my attention is, so if you play back music at very modest levels, the loudspeakers are very open and revealing, uh, but not over revealing, you know, so it's a good balance between being, uh, you know, uh, supplying a lot of detail, but not uh, over, overly so. So say that I think these loudspeakers spoil you in a, in a way, you know, you, you get used to that quite openness. Uh, the micro detail, uh, the, the layering of the instruments, the fine textures that it supplies, uh, and your ear starts uh, focusing on those things, which is quite nice. And that's why I say uh, that you uh, immediately become an audiophile, because the loudspeaker draws you in and makes you actually listen to a lot of these instruments and voices and uh, cymbals and uh, uh, the brass, uh, of the brass section of the, the recording, or uh, the trumpets. It's especially good at trumpet, and no pun intended with the actual horn but yeah uh, it's very lifelike uh, together and I can say the same about saxophones it's just uh, produced in another way uh, and not overly bright uh, it's not uh, over um, you know larger than life it's very realistic and then again maybe for a bookshelf you know it really overachieves in um, the actual sound stage that it produce uh, and the overall just enjoyment that you get from the loudspeaker so yes um, an excellent loudspeaker um, audio file loudspeaker this is how I will brand it uh, because it draws you in and it wants you to actually listen to uh, the nuances within uh, the music passages it, uh, you, um, you almost forget that it's actually a recording it's very lifelike but realistic um, and at some stage you can sometimes grab uh, reach out and grab some of these instruments so lifelike they are reproduced um, so yes um, I think that it's uh, maybe a few highlights or maybe some some guidance that I can give you yes an excellent loudspeaker that guys you really should consider um, but again I, I just uh, reinforce it uh, the placement in the room is very important you know how far you can actually place it quite nearer to the back uh, wall because of the down firing uh, port um, so um, 
I actually achieved uh, very decent results around 380 millimeters away from the back wall and then uh, the stand is actually just below 600 me uh, millimeters the actual stand but then with the um, let's with the standoff that is applied it's just over 600 about 620 millimeters above the floor uh, and then uh, the loudspeaker is around 440 uh, 440 millimeters high yeah and, and quite a deep loudspeaker as well I would say I don't have the spec here but I can share the spec sheet with you as well uh, but I would say um, just over uh, or around 300 millimeters deep well rounded product it's actually quite uh, sweet sounding at tops quite clean uh, sometimes it reminds you of uh, beryllium type uh, ribbon tweeters uh, the openness dated uh, around 120 degrees uh, uh, this dispersion uh, which is quite good um, you know um, and you actually hear that when you listen to uh, the music etc um, then maybe finally what we can touch on is the um, the, the, the actual cost uh, of the uh, product. So in South Africa it's around uh, 42 to 43,000 Rand for the actual loudspeakers uh, for a pair. Uh, and then uh, additional around 9 to 10,000 Rand for, for the stand. Uh, so uh, in South Africa yeah, the, the, the loudspeaker is around uh, 42,000 Rand and with the stand around 52,000 Rand. So in dollar terms uh, for the, the pair of loudspeakers you'll pay about $2,800. Um, look, uh, give or take a little bit, I think in the States maybe they will be slightly cheaper, uh, but around $2,800. And then uh, for including the stand it will be about $3,400. Uh, $3,400. So for excellent quality stands uh, that is custom uh, made and cust you know the same exact uh, color and what they actually state in the uh, specification is that it's a lacquer white in color it's like a piano gloss type finish uh, really beautiful um, uh, so if you see it in real life it's quite a neat looking uh, design overall and very aesthetically pleasing so yeah guys uh, okay so uh, to conclude and uh, welcome uh, Teresa for joining us and Teresa I think you also uh, enjoyed these loudspeakers what did you think of the overall sound yeah, it's good it's quite yeah it's quite good but the look of it Okay, yeah. Nice. And maybe we can order it in different colors. Uh, we have it, of course, in the white, which is very pleasing. And I must say, the Wi Fi acceptance factor is, is quite uh, high on these loudspeakers, especially because uh, they're so aesthetically pleasing. They also have it in a nice, like a satin black, and then they also have it in an overall uh, cherry color. So the whole loudspeaker in a cherry, a cherry uh, type color, but then also some shades of black uh, incorporated into the loudspeaker. So black uh, combined with the, the cherry color. If you are, um, you know, open to uh, that price uh, range of loudspeaker, um, it is truly, it is an, an audiophile loudspeaker, not because it's a boutique type of uh, loudspeaker, um, you know, uh, but because it offers such good uh, performance. Uh, again, maybe I can just mention it again and I, maybe I sound like a broken record, but uh, room placement is very uh, critical. The amount of toe that you're given it, um, you know, the, the distance from the back wall, so these loudspeakers, uh, uh, you know, make sure that you place it closer to the rear wall uh, then you'll benefit from what I call room coupling it will couple better to the room uh, but of course if it's too close to the rear wall you'll get um, unrealistic base you know the base will become a bit too punchy uh, so you need to remove it slightly from the back wall if that happens um, but it's also up to your preference perhaps you have to to tow it in significantly uh, or a minimal tow but I wouldn't say a very directive you know towards yourself to the listener uh, but there again um, also cabling is important you know so it's not overly bright the actual cables uh, but once you you settle with the correct cable and the room placement you can uh, really achieve uh, excellent results and the results is such that it's very lifelike and that's it uh, so i just like to uh, thank Teresa for joining me in this experience we enjoyed it together and we played a lot of our favorite music and it sounded good uh, and that's it um, yeah so uh, the Zengali the Zero bookshelves uh, a very good loudspeaker highly recommended by us uh, and guys you're welcome to to consult uh, the scorecard and you'll see what i uh, mean by a good loudspeaker of course uh, the results are weighted according to the, the pricing but in this case you'll notice that uh, it still achieved very high uh, 
uh, marks on the scorecard. Uh, but there again is the, the better equipment you actually, uh, you know, deploy together with the last speakers, the better it will reward you. And then again, I would say um, I prefer it on solid state power amplification and then quite substantial power amplification. I would say 180 watts minimum and the ideal will be 200 watts plus. Um, and then these last speakers will really come uh, into their own. So just, just again, thank you to uh, Francois from Audio Exchange for making it possible for us to review these loudspeakers. And uh, Francois is also the distributor uh, with Inside Africa. And congratulations to Francois for, for getting um, you know, awarded the, the distribution uh, contract. Uh, and that's it. That's uh, then us, uh, Nimrod and Teresa, the audio couple. Uh, guys, we really appreciate uh, your support. Uh, if you uh, like our videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our videos, uh, please subscribe. And if you want to get notifications, hit the bell. But that's us then, guys, signing off. Namrud and Teresa. Thanks for watching. Cheers.